What's up, kings and queens? It's Dan from Daft Previews, and I'm back here once again for the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview that you're going to see for all 12 games on this upcoming slate. I'll be going through all the key players to discuss their form with all their key props and also their matchups. Uh, with all this information and analysis, you're going to be well prepared to make your own decisions to pick some winners, whether you're looking at parlays, multis, or straight bets. I got you covered. Now, the analysis was greater than the last video. Went four on four on straight bets. Uh, the issue for me is that I chased the glory and I only played my value plays, which are close, but close doesn't pay the bills. So today, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. You'll see after I preview each game, if there is a bet that I'm going to make within that game, I'll pause that video and I'll explain the bet and the reason why I'm taking it. So let's go. We're kicking it off with the Chicago Bulls versus the Charlotte Hornets. Now, LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges are game time decisions. But let's jump into the key players and see what their form looks like. I have zoomed in so you can see more of the graphs, especially uh, for all of you mobile users. Uh, this is going to be a much better experience for you all. So I hope you guys appreciate it. So looking at Vucevic first, in his last 10 games, he's covered his points line of 17.5 in five of those games, averaging 17.5 points. In head-to-head -head matchups against the Hornets, he's covered this in three of his last seven, but those three did come in his last four games. Uh, three games against him this season, 20, 11, and 21 points. Sticking on the head-to-head -head matchup, let's check his rebound numbers out. 12, 7, and 10 in the three games this season. Um, he's averaging 10 rebounds per game across seven games against the Hornets. And looking at his last 10, he's only covered this four times, averaging 11.4. Assist-wise... He's only covered this in four of his last 10 games, averaging 3.8. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he's only covered this twice. So nothing on the Vucevic front that's getting me a bit frothy and aroused. Nick Richards, I just kind of wanted to quickly look at his rebound performances uh, because in his three games that he's played the Chicago Bulls this year, 11, 12, and 8 rebound games. And looking at his last 10, um, he's hit this in three of those games, averaging 9.5, but... He's got eight plus rebounds in nine of his last 10 games. So a bit of consistency there for some of you parlay players. Uh, PJ Washington, capable of putting some points up. 43-point game against Utah outside of that and <laughs> barely hitting his line. So uh, not a player that I'm looking at right now, but um, if Lamelo Ball's out and Bridges is out, Washington's going to put up some shots. Let's have a look at DeMar DeRozan. Points-wise, his line's at 24.5. He's only covered this in three of his last 10, averaging 22. Head-to-head -head matchups, he's only covered this twice, averaging 19.9 .9 in those games against the Hornets. Uh, looking at his last 10, let's go into his rebounds. So rebound-wise, he's covered in five of his last 10, averaging 4.7. Head-to-head uh, -head matchups, only three of his last seven. So nothing about DeMar here is getting me aroused. Uh, Assist-wise, three of his last seven, uh, against the Hornets, and in his last 10, he's covered this four times, um, but with lows of three, highs of 10. So difficult one to predict there for DeMar DeRozan as well. Miles Bridges, if, if he does suit up, interested to see how what his points look like because he is relatively consistent. Uh, he's covered 20-plus points in, what's that, eight of his last 10, which is good, but he's 25-and-a-half point line. He's only covered that once. Uh, three games against the Chicago Bulls this year, 16, 28, and 24. So if you're looking at parlays, maybe Miles Bridges for over 20 points could be a good shout. Rebound-wise, he's gone under his rebound line of nine and a half in three straight games against the Chicago Bulls. Um, and in his last 10 games, he's covered this three times. So the line is quite high. He's only averaging 7.3 rebounds per game of the season, but a line at nine and a half, you've got to be kidding me. So um, not a fan of that right now. He probably does have a good matchup, but yeah. Not for me. We know the Bulls give up a lot of rebounds to power forwards, but still, he's been playing power forward all year, and he hasn't covered this line once. So I'm not going to read too much into that. Uh, Brandon Miller, supposed to see an explosion after the Terry trade, and he has had a couple of great games. His line's at 21 and a half, though. He's covered this in, I think, Terry moved on here. So he's probably, in his last seven games, he's covered this five times since Terry Rozier moved out um, quite a bit. 16.3 in his last 10. Three head-to-head -head matchups against the Bulls. He's gone under in all of them. Um, but at the same time, Terry Rozier is not here anymore. So, um, look, the Bulls are a pretty gritty defensive team. They play slow as well. So I'm not a big fan of many props within this game. But let's have a look at Kobe White. He's capable of filling up all stat lines. Points-wise, 
He's covered his points line in five of his last 10. He's averaging 20. He scored 15 plus points in nine of his last 10 games. Looking at uh, head to head matchups, he's only gone over in one of his last six. The one he did go over just happened to be the last game. So 19, 22, and 27 points in the three games against Charlotte this year. Rebound wise, look at that. Nine, 10, and six rebounds against the Hornets in the three games this year. And looking at his last 10 games, he's only he covered his five and a half rebound line in three of those 10 games where he does cover it he covers it real well um so look rebounds for kobe white i think four could be a good shout he's hit that in eight of his last 10 he's smashed his rebound line against the chicago um charlotte hornets this year maybe for your parlays four rebounds for kobe white not a bad shout assist wise he's hit this in five of his last 10 and against the bulls in his three games, I mean, against the Hornets, three games this year, five, six, and five. So um, there's some potential there. We know that the Charlotte Hornets, not a great defensive team. So KB White could exploit some opportunities there. But look, not the horniest play in the books. Let's jump into the next game. Looking at the Detroit Pistons versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Isaiah Stewart is out. Darius Garland, he might be making a return. But it's unlikely, and Cade Cunningham is a game-time decision, but he is expected to play. Let's have a look at Jared Allen first. We'll check out his points and rebounds, um, and then maybe his assist prop. But points-wise, he's covered this in five of his last 10, averaging 17.7. He scored 20-plus in his last three games, um, 10-plus in every game in his last 10. Against the Detroit Pistons, he's covered this in three of his last five. They played each other twice this year. He scored 10 and 19 points. Rebound-wise against the Pistons, uh, not as great as you think it would be. He's only covered in one of his last five against them this year, seven and 11 rebounds. Uh, but in his last 10 games, he's rebounding like an absolute freak. He's covered this line in eight of his last 10, averaging 13.2 rebounds per game. Um, so he's been a monster on the boards as of late. Hasn't been a monster against the Pistons. Um, I'm not too sure which one prevails. Uh, if you're a fan of consistency, eat this line up, baby. But... If you think there's something to do with the matchup is the reason why he hasn't rebounded well, um, then obviously avoid it at all costs. So assist-wise, though, his line's at two and a half. He's covered this in seven of his last 10. He's averaging three assists per game. Against the Pistons, he did get three in his last game against them, but he's gone under in all the other games. So matching up against the Pistons, it hasn't been the best matchup for Jared Allen, I'd say, but his recent form um, is pretty hard to resist, isn't it? So... Has had some excellent point scoring games. He's been rebounding consistently and assist wise. He has had some great games too. He's covering that in seven of his last 10. So, very interesting. Jalen Duran, he's a man that people look at every single night. Could there be a double double? We don't know, but let's see. His line's at 12 and a half when it comes to his points. He's covered this in seven of his last 10. He's averaging 15 points per game uh, in three games against the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's uh, gone under once and then scored 14 and 17. So he's only versed the Cleveland Cavaliers once this year. He scored 17 points against them. So uh, very strong lean on his points right there. I don't mind that at all for Jalen Duran. Rebound-wise, check that out. Covered in five of his last 10, averaging 12.8 boards per game. Up against Cleveland, he got 12 rebounds in that game earlier this year. So um, his line's at 12.5 for points, 11.5 for rebounds. Double double for Jalen Duran. Uh could be a good shout. Um, but obviously not the horniest play out there at the moment, but definitely one that I'm going to consider. Uh the next one is for Cade Cunningham. Let's have a look at him. He has been a bit interrupted. Points wise, he's could cover this in seven of his last ten. Uh he has had some time off, got injured against Denver on the eighth of January, came back against the Washington Wizards 20 days later, played that game, didn't play the following game, and now. He's due to return to this one. So um, pretty long layoff. I wouldn't take his points with any confidence, regardless of what you see on this screen. This was a very long time ago. So uh, he could be a little bit rusty. Uh, but I, what I do think is a probably good shouter is his rebounds and his assists. So rebound-wise, he's covered in six of his last 10. Um, but in three games against the Cavs, he's covered them in all three. Um, and what else is there? Assist-wise... He's covered that in six of his last 10. He got 12 in his return in that Washington game, and he's covered this against Cleveland in his last two. So not bad at all for Cade Cunningham right there. Boyan Bogdanovich, let's just check his points prop out because that's where he does his work. Uh, played one game against the Cavs this year, scored 22 points. 
In his last 10 games, he's covered this line six times, averaging 20.6. He's gone 15 plus in eight of those games. Uh, but 18 and a half is the line. So it's not too bad. Just depends on whether you think the uh, Detroit Pistons can hang with them or not. So that's Bogdanovich, Donovan Mitchell. So I wouldn't take any plays on Donovan Mitchell at the moment because if Darius Garland does play, that could really shift the lines and what he's capable of achieving, whether it's points, rebounds, or assists. But let's have a look at it. Points-wise, he's covered his line in five of his last 10. Uh, he's gone under 20 points twice. So even taking a parlay at 25 or 20, still not the best bet. I think taking his over or his under, best way to play Donovan Mitchell points. Rebound-wise, he's covered in five of his last 10, averaging 5.2. Head-to-head matchups, he's gone under in his last two. I didn't do his head-to-head for points. Head-to-head for points, he's gone under in his last two as well. Assist-wise, he's gone under in all three. Uh, in his head-to-head matchups, but in his last 10 games, he's averaging eight assists per game, hitting seven out of those 10. Um, if, Dar- if, if Darius Garland does play, Donovan Mitchell under could be on here, but he's passing the ball excellently at the moment, which he really has no choice as their number one option. Let's pump the brakes, ladies and gents. This is the very first bet that I wanted to share with you. And you may have guessed it already, but I do like Cade. Cunningham. So I'm taking him for over 10 and a half rebounds and assists. Now he was close to playing against OKC, but was a very late out. He practiced on Tuesday, so he should be good to go. So he's played against the Cavs twice this season. Um, and he's recorded 13 and 19 rebounds and assists in those games. Uh, first game back after a very long absence up against the Washington Wizards, 16 rebounds and assists. Uh, His shot percentage, I think it's going to be a little bit rusty given the amount of time that he has had off, uh, but I think he's going to look to contribute in other ways. Uh, Obviously, the Cavs have some great rebounding bigs, especially if Moby suits up for this one, but Jared Allen's enough of a problem. Great rebounding bigs, um, and I think Cade Cunningham's going to have to help on the boards. Assist-wise, he's got shooters around him in Bogdanovich. He can shoot. Jalen Duran can definitely score. Alec Burks off the bench. He can get hot. So um, I like him to cover his assists and his rebounds, really. But let's play it safe and take them both. Ten and a half, it's a very low line. I think he could really blow this one out of the park. I don't think it's going to be a sweat. It's either he's going to be absolutely shit or he's going to soar straight, straight through this. You know, Even the game that he got injured against the Denver Nuggets, I think that game he had six rebounds and assists and he played less than 10 minutes. Like He pretty much played the first quarter, and he had six. So, um, And a much better defensive team than this Cleveland one. So, yeah, Cade Cunningham over in his rebounds and an assist over 10 and a half. Let's go. Let's get ne- into the next game and continue with the preview. We're looking at the Los Angeles Clippers versus the Washington Wizards. Now, in this game, let's start with Tyus Jones. He's the point guard for the Washington Wizards. Looking at his assists in this one, because he's covered it in four of his last five games, his seven and a half assist line, and he's averaging 10.2 assists per game in that span. In head-to-head matchups, he did have 12 assists in them uh, against them and six assists. Both of these games were last season, so we definitely know what he's capable of achieving here, Tyus Jones. Um, look quick, look at his points, see how he contributes. He scored 25 against him in one game in his last 10. Yeah. Nothing too arousing going on there. So for Tyus Jones, I'd only be looking at his assist prop if I was to look at anything. For those of you who like parlays and multis on safer bets, six assists. He's covered those in nine of his last 10 games. Um, And he's covered it in both of his last two games against the Los Angeles Clippers. Tyus Jones. Let's have a look at Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole's points. He's covered this in three of his last four against the Clippers. These are his Warriors stats, so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Looking at his last 10, he's covered this line in five of those games, averaging 16.3 points per game. Uh, Rebound-wise for Jordan Poole, no no one bets Jordan Poole rebound props. Line's at one and a half. Let's look at his assists. No one bets those either. So if you're looking at Jordan Poole, you're just looking at points. I wouldn't take his over, um, and I wouldn't take a safer play for 15 either. Uh, He has covered 15 in eight of his last 10 games, but this uh, Clippers team, they got perimeter defenders all over the joint. So not a fan of Jordan Poole in this one. Kyle Kuzma. Poor bloke probably gets the Kawhi Leonard matchup perhaps, but let's have a look. Points-wise, he's covered this in three of his last 10. Uh, his line's at 22 and a half. Um, if you're looking at parlays, 15, but you're probably going to get terrible odds for that. And he's gone under in two of his last 10. 
and up against the Spurs and the Pacers. Very easy matchups that he struggled in. He's got a difficult one tonight, but in head-to-head matchups, 35 points and 17 in the two games he played against them last year. Um, looking at his rebounds, he has been rebounding better lately. He's got a minimum of six rebounds in 10 straight games. His line for this one is six and a half. Uh, we know that the Los Angeles Clippers, a bit small at the moment. They've got no Zubak. Um, so rebounding is going to be at a premium for them. So Kyle Kuzma to get six and a half rebounds, it's not a bad shout, but um, I'll definitely be considering taking him for six as part of a parlay. I think it's not a bad play. Um, Assist-wise, I know he's been doing this well lately. He's hitting four-plus assists in 10 straight games. So I've been loving I think I hit a play on Kyle Kuzma not too long ago. I had, I think, over in rebounds, assist, five assists. I think it was against the Spurs and under in his points. So... I might be playing something similar for Kyle Kuzma, but very consistent assists and rebounds. He's been doing work on those four assists and six rebounds last 10 games, hitting at 100%. I don't hate that at all. Um, Kawhi Leonard, let's have a look at the claw. Points-wise, he's gone over in two of his last 10. He's averaging 22.8 points per game. Does have an easy matchup, but will he be required to score that many? He's usually the first player that they rest on any given nine if they're up a, up. A large margin. Uh, Points-wise, not too confident on that one. Rebound-wise, it's very looking very juicy here. He's covered this in six of his last 10, but four of his last five in those games, averaging seven and a half rebounds. Head-to-head matchup against the Wizards, eight rebounds and nine rebounds. So I do like Kawhi Leonard rebounds. Um, pretty good play in my opinion, but haven't bit the bullet on that one yet, but it should make an appearance in one of my parlays. Assist-wise, his line's at three and a half. He's covered in six of his last 10, but yeah, with James Harden distributing the rock, it should be easy for them to score. Does he even look to pass? I'm not too sure. So not sold on the assist prop there for Kawhi Leonard, but uh, points I'm not sold on either. Rebounds, most definitely. I'm willing to play. Let's look at Paul George. 20 and a half points is his line. He's covered in five of his last 10, but only in one of his last five. Uh, He scored 36 points against the Washington Wizards in their last matchup. Looking at his rebound prop, He's hit this in four of his last five games, seven of his last 10, and in his last matchup against the Wizards, he pulled down seven rebounds. So PG for rebounds, I don't hate that either. So like the Washington Wizards, they've got Daniel Gafford, they're going to have Marvin Bagley banging in the middle, um, much better rebounds than Daniel Tice, um, who's getting some minutes, and Mason Plumley. So Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, I think they're going to be expected to get more boards, and um, I do like them both. Paul George for rebounds. Recent form's good. Historical form's great. The matchup is great. So PG Kawhi rebounds. I don't mind that at all. Assist-wise, oh, his lines at two and a half these days. He, he's not creating. He's usually a receiver, if anything. So definitely would not be touching an assist prop for Paul George. Denny Advia, he can fill up the stat sheet real quick. Points-wise, he's covered in six of his last 10. He went under in both games against the Clippers last year with 11 points in both. Rebound-wise, he's got great rebounding form. He's covered in four of his last five and seven of his last 10. And in the two games against the Clippers last season, six rebounds and 10 rebounds covering this line. So I don't hate that either. Assist-wise, um, in his last 10 games, four of the last 10, three of his last five. Um, and he had six assists and five assists in his two games against the Clippers last season. So his that matchup was a very long time ago. So I think I put more stock into the recent form there. And his recent form tells me that rebounds is probably one that I consider, but only rebounds. Let's look at James Harden points-wise. He's covered this in four of his last 10, but three of his last five. Um, In four head-to-head matchups against the Wizards, he's averaging 22.8. He's covered this line in all four games, but none of these games were were with him in a Clippers uniform. So those are back in his Philly days. I wouldn't make a big deal out of his previous stats. Uh, Looking at his rebounds, though, Last 10, he's covered this seven times. In his last five, he's covered it four times. So great rebounding numbers for James Harden. And assist-wise, what do you expect? The excellent numbers there for James Harden. Four of his last five, six of his last 10. He's covered eight-plus assists in nine of his last 10 games. Only game he went under against the Boston Celtics and uh, wasn't required to get so many assists, apparently. So uh, James Harden, I do like that. Like his assist prop, Michelle. 
Since we're speaking about James Harden, I thought I'd let you know that I've got a bet on the man. So I've actually got two bets on him, um, single player prop and a value player. I'll take you through both of them. So the very first one we'll look at is just his assist prop. I'm taking the over, over nine and a half assists. Um, he's covered this in four straight games against the Wizards, averaging 13 and a half assists per game in those matchups. Um, he was in the, with the Philadelphia 76ers at the time. Um, but at the same time now, he's more of a pass-first player now than he was back then. So um, I like his ability to get these assists, and I think he can get them quickly against a Wizards team that doesn't play defense. Um, he has gone under his assist line in four of his last 10 games, though. But in terms of the matchup, Memphis, the Timberwolves, Celtics, they're all top 10 defensive teams, and they don't allow many assists. Um, OKC, they're about middle of the pack in terms of assists, and he did go under. But in that game, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George... Russell Westbrook and Terrence Mann, um, they combined for 19 assists in that game, which is an absolute outlier. That does not happen. So Harden only finished on eight assists in that game. Those guys don't normally produce those numbers. You saw it in when I went through it. Kawhi assist, they've been okay. Paul George have been well down. Westbrook off the bench, his assist numbers are down. And Terrence Mann averages less than two assists per game. So for those four guys to rack up 19 together, massive outlier. So... Look, I said it earlier, Harden's a pass-first player, especially at this point in his career, up against the Wizards, amongst the worst in the league at allowing assists. I don't see how Harden doesn't rack these up and rack them up quickly. Let's jump into the value play for James Harden, though. Uh, I'm taking him for under 17.5 points, 5 rebounds, and 10 assists. We just spoke about his assists. Rebound-wise, we just went through that. Um, He has been rebounding excellently as of late, um, and especially with Zubak out. Um, Harden, George, Kawhi. I think they've all stepped up their rebounding game. Um, in terms of points, under 17 and a half, he's gone under that quite a lot recently. Given how easy this game should be to score and how easy it should be for James Harden to find other players, um, I don't think he's going to be required to shoot that ball that many times. I think under 17 and a half is a great play as well. Um, but I would, wouldn't make his under a main play. Main plays on the assists. Um, but yeah, I'm liking that. I've got half a unit on James Harden. Absolutely destroy. All right, let's jump into the next game, shall we? We're looking at the Phoenix Suns versus the Brooklyn Nets, and I am wearing my Phoenix apparel today, and it's not because I support this team. I honestly just like the colors. Right, the fit, ladies and gents. But uh, let's talk about it. Grayson Allen and Ben Simmons, their game time decisions in this one. Let's have a quick look at Nurk. Look at his rebounds to see what he's been doing over here. Rebound-wise, he's actually been pretty quiet last four games. Um, he's gone under in four straight by a very long margin. Uh, he's covered in five of his last ten, still averaging nine and a half rebounds. Head-to-head matchups against the Brooklyn Nets. Played them once this year, scored tw- uh, recorded 22 rebounds against them. That's pretty crazy. Um, Points-wise, he's gone over in three straight. He scored 15 in that game against the Brooklyn Nets. In his last ten, he's only covered this once. So, obviously, the Phoenix Suns, healthy. Bill's there, Durant. Booker shooting the ball like a madman. Yusuf Nurkic not getting his opportunities. Looking at his minutes, these minutes are also down, um, averaging 25 in his last 10, but over his last five games, that's definitely a lot further under. So, he's not taking the taking many shots, so uh, I wouldn't put too much stock into his head-to-head matchup at the moment. Nicholas Claxton, his line's at 13.5. He's covered this four times. He's covered this in three straight games against the Phoenix Suns, though. So, uh, But this Brooklyn team, they're deep with a lot of players. Like, if you're playing 2K, I don't play 2K anymore. I gave up on it about two years ago. But I feel like if you're playing 2K and you use the Brooklyn Nets, you'd have a lot of people with their overall ratings between 75 and 85. So their team is deep. They have a lot of options. None of them are that good. But anybody could get their points on any given night. So I wouldn't touch any Brooklyn Nets players' points, to be honest. Uh, but let's have a look at his rebounds. Rebound-wise, eight of his last 10, averaging 11.8. Um, you could take 10 rebounds as part of a parlay, perhaps. Uh, he's hit that at 90% in his last 10 games. Head-to-head matchups, 11-13, but then only seven rebounds against the Phoenix Suns earlier this year. Look, it makes sense. Yusuf Nurkic pulled down 22. Must have been a difficult night for Nick Claxton on the boards. Let's look at the slim reaper, Kevin Durant. Top 10 scorer all time. Let's get it, my boy. 27 points in his last matchup against the Brooklyn Nets. In his last 10 games, he's gone under in four straight. So 
His line's at 25 and a half, one of the lowest lines you will ever see for Kevin Durant, but it's still not low enough for me to take an over based on what we've been seeing. Rebound-wise, he had six rebounds in that matchup against the Nets last time. He's only covered his rebound line three of his last five, averaging seven rebounds per game. Um, but I wouldn't confidently take that either. Looking at his assists, he's hit this much better. Five straight games, averaging 6.6 assists per game. He had four assists in that matchup against the Brooklyn Nets earlier this year. His line's at four and a half, but it is juice. That's minus 154. Would you take it? I don't think so. I think it might be best to take him for six. I'm not too sure about that, but yeah. Not feeling Kevin Durant in this one. Let's have a look at Bridges. Points-wise, I don't care what these stats say. I'm probably leaning to the under anyway. He's hit it in six of his last 10, averaging 26 points. He scored 21 points in his last game against the Suns, uh, but 24 and a half. Uh, yeah, still not a fan. They're deep. He did score 33 points in his last game, though. Does Ben Simmons unlock Michael Bridges, perhaps? I'm not too sure. But assist-wise, he's covered that in six of his last 10, averaging 3.7. And he's he got two assists in that last game against the Phoenix Suns. Rebound-wise, yeah, five of his last 10, three of his last five. There's nothing juicy happening over here. And Bradley Beal, let's check you out. Mine's at 18 and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10, two of his last five. Last three matchups against the Phoenix, I mean the Brooklyn Nets, 20 and 25 last season. Earlier this year, he scored 14 points against them. So in that game, he had 14 points, one rebound, and four assists. So looking at his rebound prop, he has hit this in five of 10 and three of his last five. Four rebounds might be a good shout for Bradley Bill. I'm not man enough to take that four and a half, but maybe if you're looking at your parlay, Bradley Bill, that seems there's a bit of consistency there. And assist wise, um, four of his last five is covered, seven of his last 10. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, four assists against the Brooklyn Nets last time they matched. So there is some consistency here, but I wouldn't take him for four. I think you're better off just taking the line as a single bet. But Hey, I'll leave it up to you guys. I'm no professional. Let's have a look at Devin Booker. D-Book. Points-wise, finally slowed down against Miami. Had three straight games over 40. Finishes with 22 against the Miami Heat. Uh, still averaging 38 points per game in his last five. Uh, against the Brooklyn Nets, he scored 34 points earlier this season. So he had 34, six rebounds, and 12 assists. So massive output from Devin Booker. Looking at his rebounds, four of his last 10 and two of his last five. You can see there, four rebounds, though. He's hit in all 10 games. So great look there. Assist-wise, um, look, very up and down. Four of his last 10, but one in his last five. Um, I wouldn't take any play on Devin Booker assist right now. But look, parlays, you could look at his rebounds. Points-wise, I wouldn't touch that because he's capable of 60, but he's also capable of 16. So unless you've got a read on this, uh, don't play that. Cam Thomas, we're only going to look at his points prop because he doesn't do anything but shoot the ball. Um, he's hit this 6 of 10, 3 of his last 5. His last three games have been excellent, 25, 37, and 25 points. Um, looking at his head-to-head -head matchups, he scored 24 points in that last matchup against the Phoenix Suns. So, look, I do like that. Cam Thomas, overs in, overs in points. I haven't made a bet on this, but I do like it. I like it a lot. So... Yeah, let me see. Look, as always, my final bets will be in the pinned comments. I'll share the bets that I already have as I go through this preview. But yeah, I don't mind that at all. Cam Thomas. Jumping into the next ones, the Sacramento Kings versus the Miami Heat. Now, we're going to look at Demonis Sabonis in this one first. His line's at 18 and a half. He's hit this in six of 10, but only two of his last five in head-to-head -head matchups against the Miami Heat. 18 and 22 points yet to burst them this season in his... Looking at his rebounds, though, 7 and 12. Hasn't rebounded well against the Miami Heat. And in his last 10, he's only hit this line three times. But he's still averaging 13 because he hit 20-plus rebounds twice. Um, but 12 and a half, I don't know if I would take that, honestly. I would really lean to the under for that one. And assist-wise, let's have a look at that. He's covered in 5 of 10, but only 2 of his last 5. The line set at 8 and a half in head-to-head -head matchups, 3 and 8. So... Look, I'm not getting strong vibes on anything to do with Demanda Sabonis at the moment. So one thing I'm thinking of, uh, right now is do we just take his under? He did have 42 in his last game against the Heat. And he's got his over in seven of his last 10. So I shan't be taking an under. 
Let's look at Bam out of bio. His line is at 19 and a half points. He's gone under in four straight games. One in his last five. He's averaging 15 points per game. Head-to-head matchups, though. Scored 20 plus in both games against the Kings last year. Rebounds, let's look at that. Six of his last 10, four of his last five. He's averaging 11 rebounds per game in head-to-head matchups against the Kings. Got 11 in his last one, six in the one prior to that. So Bam's in pretty good rebounding form. Not too bad. Assist-wise, look, he's capable of twos and violence, but line at four and a half, has had games of one and two, can get over five and six. But um, yeah, not a strong read there. And in head-to-head matchups, four and six. So Bam, you don't excite me. Scary Terry. So the question is, is Terry scary once again? Because... He's played five games for the Miami Heat now. He's finally covered his points line. 21 against the Phoenix Suns. Went under and four, four straight prior to that. Two great head-to-head games. 34 and 22 points. He's covered those in. Looking at his rebounds. Five of 10, but only two of his last five. So those last five games are probably the most important ones to look at. Assist-wise, two of his last five as well. So nothing on the rebounds and assists that gets me totally for Terry. Uh, Darren Fox, he's been playing, I don't know, has he been playing bad? He's just not making any headlines. So points line, 25 and a half. He's covered in two of his last five and five of his last 10. His last matchup against this team, he scored 17 points. Looking at his assists, the line's at four and a half, five of his last 10, three of his last five he's covered. Um, and he had five assists against them last time. So I think the line's right. Four to four and a half. I think he finishes on four or he finishes on five. So, given that, I'm not going to be playing anything on De'Aaron Fox in this game. Harrison Barnes, I want to have a quick look at him because he's been shooting the ball a lot. So, he had these massive uh, three games against the Memphis Grizzlies. He shot poorly. Just let me have a quick look here. He played 35 minutes, shot the ball 15 times. He only made five. So, 33%, pretty low for him up against the Miami Heat. Pretty gritty defensive team. His line's at 14 and a half. I don't think this is the game where he bounces back. But if he keeps shooting the ball that often, I'll be looking for a good matchup. Uh, don't mind Harrison Barnes. Jimmy Butler, said this many times before, we don't bet on Jimmy Butler unless it's the playoffs. He has had two good games though. 28 against New York, 26 against the Suns. It's covered in four of his last 10. His last matchup against this team, he scored 13 points. Rebound-wise, He's covered his line in two of his last 10. They just happened to be his last two games against New York and Phoenix. He had seven rebounds in his last matchup against the Kings. And assist-wise, he hasn't covered this at all in five straight games, uh, but he did have six assists in his last game against the Kings. So have a look at Harkes. He was pretty good to bet on at one point in time this year. Um, he's gone under in his last two. He's averaging uh, 12.7 points in his last 10. He has covered in seven of those games, but... Uh, definitely under in his last two since coming back from injury. So someone I would look to avoid right now. Malik Monk, your spark plug off the bench. Six of his last 10, but only one of his last five. Covered in one of two against the Miami Heat. Assist-wise, he's very capable of this. Comes off the bench and has the same assist line as a starting point guard. Four and a half. He's covered in three of his last five and six of his last 10. And he hit this in one of his last two games against the Miami Heat. So Malik Monk, eh, not too bad but nothing yelling out to me. Let's have a look at Tyler Hero. Points-wise, let's start off there. Tyler Hero has gone over this in only one of his last five games. So this is the Terry Rozier effect. A couple less shots for Tyler Hero. Slowed him down a little bit. Volume shooters need to shoot the ball more in order to score and find their rhythm. So if you reduce the number of shots they would take, it does impact them quite a bit. Um, But he has been very close to this points line. Um, he did average 30 points against the Kings in his last two, though, 34 and 26, but they're a different team now. So this last five is probably where I'd spend a bit more energy when I'm looking at the Miami Heat. So let's only look at that. Rebound-wise, two of his last five, nothing crazy there. And assist-wise, two of his last five. So a bit interrupted until Terry finds himself in, acclimated within that team. We got another bet for you. Well, when I say we, I talk about me because I'm the only person who does this. I film these alone, so I must be losing my fucking mind. But let's talk about it. I like Terry Rozier over 15 and a half points. Now, I just mentioned it not too long ago. He's covered in one of his last five games in a heat uniform. He cashed in 21 points against the Phoenix Suns. There was only a slight uplift in his shot attempts in that game from his prior averages 
um, where he's playing with the Miami Heat. Look, at his worst, he's taking at least 10 shots in this game. And if he's shooting close to his 45% average this season, I think he's going to take even more. Um, in the games prior to Phoenix, where he was playing for Miami, he shot two for 17 from downtown, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, in Against the Suns, he finally got it rolling. He went four from six. So I'm at, uh, the attempts, I think they're going to be in there. 12 to 15 shots is what I'm counting on. And if he shoots close to his averages this season, I reckon he'll cover this line. Um, he's up against the Kings. They allow uh, oppositions to shoot 39% from deep, which is the second worst in the league. So if Terry Rozier can nail a couple of three-pointers, he'll start feeling himself. Those shot attempts will go up, and I think he cashes his 15.5 points. So let's go scary Terry. I want you to be scary once again. Let's jump into the next game. It's the New Orleans Pelicans versus the Houston Rockets. Now let's take a look at it. Vote Jonas Valanciunas. We'll check out his points and rebounds real quick. We can see seven of his last 10 and four of his last five, he's covered this points line. Against the Rockets, he's covered this in four of his last six. They played each other twice this year. He's gone 15 and 10. Rebound-wise, nine and 11 in the last two games against them this year. And over his last 10 games, four of 10, but he's hit this in three of his last five. I think taking Jonas for maybe 10 points could be all right for your parlay players. 80% coverage in his last 10 games, um, and he's covered 10 points uh, in five straight games against the Houston Rockets. That's not a bad shout. Uh, let's have a look at Shingun Against the Pels, twice this year he's played them, 24 points and 37. So great scoring streak against them this year. Over his last 10, he's hit this in five of his last 10, three of his last five. So, yeah, it's not bad for Shingun, but, yeah, very up and down. Looking at his rebounds, Seven of his last 10. He's averaging 10 boards per game, and he's hit this in four of his last five. Up against the Rockets, though, eight. I mean, up the Pelicans, eight rebounds and 11 in the two games this year. So, um, look, he's rebounding quite nicely. Maybe Sengun for eight rebounds. For you parlay players out there, that's not too bad. His assist props at five and a half. He's hit this in four of his last five, averaging 6.8 assists. Up against the Pelicans, six and three in his last two. So... Not too bad at all. CJ McCollum, points-wise, he's hit this in four of his last 10 and only one of his last five. To, he only played in one game against the Rockets this year. He scored 13 points, recorded five rebounds, and only two assists. So looking at his rebounds, though, he has hit this in four of his last five against the Rockets. And looking at his last 10 games, seven times, but three of his last five, he's got these rebounds. Assist-wise, nah, not good at all. Three of his last 10, zero of his last five. Um, and his last game against the Rockets this year, he went under as well. So, yeah, not a big fan of his recent form of assist there, CJ McCollum. Let's look at Fred Van Vliet points-wise. His line is at 14.5, covered in one of three games against the Pels. In his last 10, he's covered this five times. In his last five, he's covered this twice. Looking at his assists, five of his last 10 and only two of his last five. Last two games, though, eight assists and 14 assists. Looking up his matchups against the Pelicans, eight and three in the two games this season for Fred Van Vliet. Let's have a look at Zion. Points-wise, he's covered this in three straight games against the Rockets. He's covered this in six of his last 10 and three of his last five. Rebound-wise, not a great rebounder for his position, but I guess he's not very tall. He's more wide than he is tall. Only two of his last 10. He hasn't covered it in his last five, but he has covered it in both games against the Rockets this year. So. There's a contradiction. It's a great matchup for Zion, but he has a bit rebounding well. Assist-wise, he went under in both games against the Rockets. Five of his last 10, he's gone over, and two of his last five. So, interesting one there for Zion. Jabari Smith Jr., I don't know if he's been making waves lately, but let's have a look. Points-wise, lines at 14 and R, five of his last 10 in the green, and only two of his last five. Games against the Pels, scored 26 points in their last one, but scored six in the one prior. Rebound-wise, 7 and 11 in the two games this year. And looking at his last 10, 6 of his last 10, and then only 2 of his last 5 over this rebound line. Has hit 6-plus rebounds in 10 straight games, and he had 6-plus rebounds in both games this year. Odds won't be great, but hey, parlays, let's think about it. Brandon Ingram, please don't tell me he's still going under in points. He's not. So over his last 10, he's hit this three times. Gone over in his last two, though. Excellent scoring games. Um, 
head-to-head matchups though. 31 and 19 against the Houston Rockets this season. Rebound wise, Brandon Ingram, four of ten and three of his last five. Four rebounds in 10 plus games. Against the Pels, six and three though. Assists. Seven of his last ten and four of his last five. He's gone over this assist line. Against the Houston Rockets gone under in two straight games against them this year. Uh, uh, Jalen Green, he might be worth having a look at. Points-wise, he's covered this. 25-9 and in the two games against them this year. Last 10, five of his last 10, but three of his last five. He's averaging 26.8 points per game in his last five. Rebound-wise, double-digit rebounds in three consecutive games. Hornets, Brooklyn Nets, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Could this be the new him? Interesting. Uh, he's covered this line just once out of six games against the Pelicans, but be interested to know what's going on here. Does he do it again? I wonder what 10 rebounds are playing because that's an anomaly. Once, yeah, I get it, but then three consecutive games, something must have changed within Jalen Green. Assist-wise, four of his last 10, but three of his last five. Against the Pels, went well under in his last two games, so... Yeah, that's a very interesting one. I've got no bets on this game, but um, some interesting stuff nonetheless. Let's get into the next one. The Dallas Mavericks versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, Luca, Kyrie Irving, Derek Lively all out. Mike Conley's a game-time decision on this, so it could be one-way traffic for the Timberwolves. No markets on Mavericks players at the moment, but let's go through some of these Wolves. Rudy Gobert covered his points line in three of five against the Mavs. Six of his last ten, but only two of his last five. Rebound-wise, three of his last five against the Mavs, six of his last 10, and then two of his last five. Last game against Dallas had 17 rebounds. Two games prior, he did go under. So he's versus the Mavs three times this year, and he's only gone over once. Carl Anthony Towns, let's check his points and rebounds. He's gone under in three straight games against the Mavericks. All of those were this season in those games. 17 rebounds in one of them, and he went under in both of the others. And assist-wise, he's gone under in all. So. Looking at his last 10 scoring-wise, though, four of his last 10, three of his last five, um, and rebound-wise, only three of his last 10. So, yeah, not like what I'm seeing out of Carl Anthony Towns. Let's look at Ant-Man and Edwards. Points-wise, four of his last 10 and two of his last five in the green. Head-to-head matchups against the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, three games this season, 9, 44, and 36. So another point explosion from Ant-Man, possibly. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, let's have a look at his assists. Five of his last 10, but only two of his last five. And he went under in his last two games against the Dallas Mavericks. So if you're thinking about correlation, what are we seeing here? Sorry, I meant to look at points and assists. He went under in points, over in points, over in points. So under, over, over. Assist-wise, over, under, under. So if you like Ant-Man to score points, probably take his under in assists. Vice versa. If you like, and we get some assists, take some unders in points because a bit of correlation from the three games already this season. Let's jump into the next one. It's the Orlando Magic versus the San Antonio Spurs and Zach Collins and Keldon Johnson a game time decisions. Let's have a quick look at Wendell Carter Jr. first. Points wise, he's covered in five of his last 10, but only two of his last five. Head-to-head matchup. These games were last year, so not too much stock on that. They've got Wimby now, the Spurs. Rebounding-wise, he's covered in four of his last five, but only five of his last ten. Lines at seven and a half. Don't hate that. Uh, Marco Fultz, he hasn't been generating much numbers. Trey Jones, let's have a look at him. He's usually good for some assists. There it is. Five of his last ten, averaging 8.2. Three of his last five. Last matchup against the Magic, he had eight assists. Magic are a pretty good defensive team, though, this season, so I don't think assists are going to come easy. Let's have a look at Banchero. Points-wise, he's gone over in three straight games. So he's covered in three of his last five, five of his last 10, uh, 27 in his last game against the Spurs. Rebound-wise, five of his last 10, but only two of his last five. He went under in his rebound line in both games against the Spurs. Assist-wise, seven of his last 10. He's gone over in four straight, four of his last five. Uh, lines at five and a half, though. You can get that for plus money. Uh, so it does appear a little bit high. He's gone under in both of his games against the Spurs. So I think this really depends on the tempo. Does this game get played at the Magic's tempo, which is a little bit slower, 
and points are harder to come by? Or is it like the Spurs and it gets a little bit loose? So that's a little bit hard for me to decide on right now. So I haven't got any players on this game. Jeremy Sohan, he can rack up some stats. Points-wise, five of his last 10, but three of his last five. Given the right matchup, he can blow this out of the water. Um, he doesn't have a great matchup, though. The Orlando Magic have plenty of players to slow someone like Jeremy Sohan down. Someone they might have a bit of trouble slowing down, though, is Victor Wembanyama. So he scored 20 plus game, 20 plus points in nine consecutive games. Consistent as hell, uh, but he's only covered his line in four of 10, and he's gone under in four straight. Rebound wise, he's been great too. Seven of his last 10, averaging 10 boards per game. He's covered this line in four straight, uh, getting double digit rebounds. The Orlando Magic are a good defensive um, rebounding team, though. So I don't know if Victor Wimbanyama is going to have such a uh, so much success on the offensive glass the way he normally would, but look, he's a freak of nature. There's no reason why he can't do that. Franz Wagner, let's have a look at Franz points wise. Six of his last 10 in the green, but only two of his last five. Uh, rebound wise, four of his last 10 and one in his last five. And assist wise, he's hit this in three straight though, five of his last 10. Um, and he did cover this in both of his games against the Spurs, but yeah. Not getting strong vibes there. Franz Wagner, Devin Vassell. Uh, he's scoring quite well. Six of his last 10, but four of his last five, averaging 21.4 points per game. So this line is quite high. Um, based on his season averages of 18 points, the line set at 20 and a half, and he's up against a very good defensive team in the Orlando Magic. Uh, I'm not sure if he can get there. Assist-wise, five of his last 10, three of his last five. Line set at four and a half. Um, yeah. Pretty difficult to me, that line. That line is sharp as hell. Uh, let's jump into the next game. There's fuck all props in it. There's only one. It's the Denver Nuggets versus the Thunder, and that's because Nikola Jokic, SGA, Chet Holmgren, all game-time decisions, and Jalen Williams is out. So this would be a game that I would have loved to look forward to seeing, but given that how many players could be out, it's not so exciting. But let's have a look at Nikola Jokic. His props are available. Um, no one else is on that team, but... If he's out, you know, obviously a lot of things change. Points-wise, he's scored 25-plus points in 10 straight games. He's covered his points line in six of his last 10, though. Against the Thunder, he's only covered in two of his last six. Failing to score 25 points in the other four games he went under. That's interesting. Rebound-wise, 10-plus rebounds in 10 straight games. He's covered this four of his last 10, three of his last five. Against the Thunder, he's gone under in the... Uh, two most recent games this year had 14 in their first matchup. So you'd think he'd be able to destroy the boards up against Chet Holmgren, but he hasn't done that as a late assist-wise. Three games this year, 5, 12, and 7 against the Thunder. And in his last 10, he's covered this five times. In his last five, he's only covered this twice. So, yeah. I normally get strong Nikola Jokic vibes when he's playing, and I usually do quite well. I think my lifetime on betting on Nikola Jokic is very profitable. But in this one, if he's completely healthy, I've got no read on this one whatsoever. So don't know if Chet's going to play either. So wait to see who is in and who is out. And if you're using props.cash, filter your players by how they perform with or without all of these other guys. So um, use that to find some juicy lines. Let's jump into the next and final game. We're looking at the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Portland Trailblazers. Um, let's have a Brook Lopez gander at the moment because he's capable of some crazy shit points wise. Six of 10, three of five. He's averaging 15 points in his last 10. His line's at 12 and a half. Um, head to head matchups against the Blazers. 10 points against them earlier this season, but prior to that, 14 and 27. Sticking on his rebounds against the Blazers, four, nine, six rebounds in their last matchup. His line's at nine, uh, five and a half, but you can get that for plus money. Was rebounding very well until his last two games, but 6 of 10, 3 of 5. Um, so I think the line's just about right, to be honest. So not game enough to take any of those on. Let's look at DeAndre Aiden, see what he's been doing. Points-wise, he's covered this in four straight games. Pretty strong and consistent form, DeAndre Aiden. Line's at 14 and a half. So covered in four of his last five, averaging 16.6 points per game in him. Last three games against the Bucks, 22, 16, and 14. The 14 as a Portland Trailblazer. So interesting there. Rebound-wise, 11, 8, and 13 against the Bucks. 
And in his last 10, five of his last 10, but three of his last five. Line set at 10 and a half, though. They must have expected to get some juicy shit out of DeAndre. Damian Lillard up against his old team. He's covered this five of his last 10, but only two of his last five. Had 31 points against the Portland Trailblazers earlier this year. Rebound-wise, seven of his last 10 and three of his last five. He had five rebounds against the Trailblazers earlier this year. Assist-wise, five of his last 10 and two of his last five, and he only had four assists against the Portland Trailblazers. Let's have a look at Giannis. Now, it feels like Giannis rarely ever hits his points line, um, but when he does hit it, I've, no I've normally backed the under. So he's hit his points line in two of his last 10, one of his last five, still scoring a lot of points. Uh, in head-to-head -head matchups, he's gone over in two or three, he scored 33 in his last matchup against the Blazers. Rebound-wise, Five of his last 10, but four of his last five. And 7, 13, and 16, 16 rebounds against the Blazers. Assist-wise, 6, 8, and 6 in those three games. Last 10, 6 of those games he's covered. And in his last five, 3. So his last two games, pretty low on the assist front from Giannis. Jeremy Grant, not looking at his assist or rebounds because he's not doing anything but scoring anyway. He's covered in five of his last 10 and three of his last five. The game against the Milwaukee Bucks early this season, he scored 22 points. So, Bobby Portis can have some impact off the bench. He scored 12 points in that last game against the Blazers and covered his line. Five of his last 10, he's gone over, but only two of his last five. Rebound-wise, can snatch a whole lot of rebounds in a short amount of time. Six of his last 10 and three of his last five. Against the Portland Trail Blazers earlier this year, he had eight rebounds. So, Bobby Portis rebounds. I don't hate that whatsoever. Uh, Chris Middleton, let's look at this, ugly mother. Points-wise, five of his last 10, three of his last five. 13 points in his last matchup against the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, that was last year. Um, so let's just look at his recent form. Rebounds, four of his last 10, but all of those were in his last five games. Assist-wise, four of his last 10, but only one of his last five. Malik Beasley, just want to quickly check his points. Points-wise, six of his last 10, but only two of his last five. He has covered this in four or five games against the Trailblazers. Scored 14 in his last matchup against them. Let's have a look at Malcolm Brogdon, starting as point guard. He scored 18 points in his last game against the Bucks. He's covered this in six of his last 10 and four of his last five. Gee, that's got me a little bit aroused. Malcolm Brogdon. Um, we know that the... Uh, Milwaukee Bucks don't defend point guards very well either, so that could be a good play. Rebound-wise, 5 of 10, 3 of his last 5. Last matchup against him, he had 8 boards. That's pretty crazy. And assist-wise, uh, 3 of his last 10 but and 3 of his last 5. Has hit 6 assists in 7 consecutive games, though. So, uh, And he had 12 assists against the Bucks earlier this year. Far out. This guy killed it. What do you have? 12 assists, 8 rebounds. And 18 points. What an absolute machine. So he had 38 PRA. He lines at 27 and a half. Looking at his PRA, these last uh, six games, seven games, actually, he's been producing quite well. Um, I don't mind Malcolm Brogdon. So I don't know what it's going to be, but there could be a Malcolm Brogdon bet pinned in the comments. Let's look at Anthony Simons points wise. Three of his last 10 and only two of his last five. Uh, didn't play the Milwaukee Bucks early this year. 29 and 21 against them last year. All right. Looking at his rebounds, that's difficult. Four of his last 10, but two of his last five. Can't predict that shit. And then assist-wise, he's hit this in three straight. That's pretty good. But prior to that, went under in seven straight games. So, yeah. Tough to get a read there on Anthony Simon. So, um, yeah. I do like the Malcolm Brogdon one. Outside of Malcolm Brogdon, I also have another bet on this game, though. Um, and at an early look, I bounced on Giannis Antetokounmpo, over 11.5 rebounds. Now, he had 16 rebounds in his last matchup against the Blazers. They do allow the seventh most rebounds per game. The Blazers lack three-point shooters uh, outside of Brogdon and Simons. Uh, I think the Buck Bucks front court, they should eat up a lot of rebounds in this game. So Giannis... Um, and Bobby Portis, I think they can have some big rebound games. Jabari Walker, if um, he's not an offensive threat, so if Giannis gets him, he'll be able to cruise a little bit on the defensive end. And if he's defending Jeremy Grant, he'll be sitting in the weak side chilling. So Jeremy Grant doesn't move much off the ball, and he doesn't crash offensive rebounds. 
when he does get the ball, he can be aggressive trying to score. But at the same time, I think regardless of who Giannis matches up against, he's going to have a great matchup here to get boards. Um, if a blowout does occur, the Bucks D, like I don't know if they're good enough to blow anybody out, but um, the defense isn't that great. So I wouldn't be surprised if this game stays close. Giannis plays 35 plus minutes and fills up the stat sheet. But in terms of rebounds, I really love that for Giannis right now. Let's go. But look, that is a wrap on today's video. So as always, check the pinned comments for my final picks on these games. Um, if you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Like the video, sub to the channel if you're new, turn on the noties. And before I let you guys go, I gotta play this song for y'all. You're gonna love it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. To the channel, cause your boys getting busy. Coming to your line from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily. It's all free, you don't even have to pay me.